Mannequin, the romantic tale of a man who falls in love with a life-size doll. No, 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 not like that. Released in 1987, it tells the story of Jonathan, played by Andrew McCarthy, a down-on-his-luck former sculptor, who keeps going from job to job. However, things get weird when he gets a job at a department store, and one day while dressing a shop window display, he is shocked to see a mannequin he had previously sculpted come to life, played by Kim Cattrall. The mannequin is Emmy, the spirit of an ancient Egyptian. And when Jonathan and Emmy are being observed by others, she goes back to being a mannequin. With only Jonathan being able to see her in her living form. Jonathan achieves great success in the department store thanks to Emmy's help, where he also finds himself falling in love with her. Where, of course, shenanigans occur along the way. In this cheesy but still able to tug on the heartstrings romantic comedy. So today we're exploring Mannequin. It's kind of like Splash, only with a shop window dummy. Yeah, I know it sounds weird and it's kind of hard to explain. It's easier to just watch the movie. So let's check out 10 things that you didn't know. By the way, do you like my sweater? I call it mental juice. Number 10, inspired by a true event. Now it's okay, don't panic. When I say true event, I don't mean that somewhere a shop mannequin actually came to life and started walking about the place. In real life, that wouldn't be whimsical, but more terrifying. Note, mannequin was the creation of American filmmaker Michael Gottlieb, AKA the little brother of Carl Gottlieb, who co-wrote the screenplay for Jaws, <laughs> which is miles away from mannequin. Michael Gottlieb co-wrote and directed Mannequin. In fact, it was his first movie. And he got the idea when walking down Fifth Avenue one day, where he walked past the department store, Bergdorf Goodman. And when he walked past a display window featuring a mannequin on display, it looked as though the mannequin had moved. But this was thanks to an optical illusion created by sunlight and shadows. But this strange encounter of seeing what looked like a shop window dummy coming to life would inspire Gottlieb to create Mannequin. It's also noted that there are similarities between Mannequin and the mythical Greek legend Pygmalion, who carved a statue and fell in love with it, with the statue coming to life, as well as the 1948 romantic musical comedy One Touch of Venus, which was about a department store mogul who buys a statue of the Greek goddess Venus to put on display in his department store, where a window dresser employee kisses the statue, which causes it to come to life. And after making Mannequin, Gottlieb would go on to direct Mr. Nanny and a kid in King Arthur's court. Yep, true story. Number 9, Original Title Well, 20th Century Fox came on board to distribute Mannequin in the US, with the So Bad It's Good studio Canon Films distributing the film in the UK. However, when released on DVD, it was done so with MGM. But regardless, Mannequin was now on board and backed up by studios. However, it seemed that one thing needed to be changed, that being the title, as the original title of the movie was Perfect Timing. Yeah, I get where they were going with it, but perfect timing is a little weak. I mean, that title can literally mean anything. Whereas Mannequin is simpler, but straight to the point, and lets you know right away what you're in for. A movie revolving around a mannequin. Hey, it may sound weird having a romantic comedy where a man falls in love with a mannequin, but don't forget in the 80s, there were actually lots of movies involving strange romances, like Splash, which involves a man falling in love with a mermaid. Howard the Duck, where a woman falls in love with a duck and Christine, where a teenager falls in love with a demonic car. But that one was more scary and less romantic. Number 8, original choice to play the lead. It was originally envisioned for Mannequin's main character, John Switcher, to be an older character, who was depicted as being a lonely store manager. And the original choice for the part was British comedian Dudley Moore, who not only proved to have the comedic chops, but also throughout the 80s had starred as the romantic lead in several comedies, including Arthur, Crazy People, and Mickey and Maud. 
However, Hollywood marketing expert Joseph Farrell, who was also the executive producer to Mannequin, thought that a younger Brack Pack member, Andrew McCarthy, would be more appealing to the younger female demographic, which would boost the movie's marketing and sales. So the 20-something-year-old Pretty in Pink and St. Elmo's Fire star was cast as Jonathan. Future Sex and the City star Kim Cattrall was cast as the Mannequin, aka Emmy. She had previously starred in the comedy hit Police Academy. In fact, Mannequin was something of a Police Academy reunion, as it also starred fellow Police Academy actor G.W. Bailey, who was playing a character called Captain Felix Maxwell. But yeah, he's pretty much playing the Captain Harris character that he had previously played in Police Academy, but that's not a bad thing, he's pretty good at it. In fact, Mannequin has a really impressive cast featuring other stars, like James Spader, Estelle Getty, and Meshach Taylor. Number 7. Filming Location The filmmakers were looking for an elegant looking department store to film the scenes set in the fictional Prince and Company department store as seen in the movie. And apparently the production crew visited stores all across America, where they came across the John Wanamaker department store in Philadelphia, and felt that it was the right place to capture the right atmosphere for Mannequin. The John Wanamaker department store was built in 1876 and had already had brief scenes filmed at the location for the 1981 movie Blowout, which starred John Travolta. The Philadelphia mayor Wilson Good was excited about this, as he felt the movie's production would inject $3 million into the city. In order to film the scenes required, filming would start at 9pm and last till 6am the following day, as not to interfere with the store's business. And in recent years, the John Wanamaker's department store would get converted into a Macy's. Number 6. Creating the Mannequin Without a doubt, the mannequin seen in Mannequin is pretty impressive, as you can really see it's actress Kim Cattrall, as it captures her likeness perfectly. However, in order to create the illusion in the movie, a total of six mannequins were created, with each mannequin made having a different expression. In order to create the mannequins, Cottrell had to spend six weeks posing for a sculptor in Santa Monica. And in order to prepare to play the sculptured mannequin, Cottrell got into a bodybuilding routine. Cottrell really appreciated her experience in Mannequin, as it was the first time she played a true leading lady, the main star so to speak, as she always felt that in her previous roles, she was the girl in the background. I guess you can kind of understand that when examining previous movies that she had starred in, like Porky's, as brilliant as that movie is. She also claimed that she felt grown up and liked wearing a dress in the movie, as in real life she always saw herself as being more of a tomboy. Yeah, and when watching the movie, it's damn near impossible to not fall in love with her. Number 5. Some of the cast thought that Mannequin would fail. According to co-star G.W. Bailey, he and some of the other stars associated with Mannequin found the movie that they were making to be, quote, beyond silly, further explaining that while filming, the cast would do double takes, with each take being as outrageous and ridiculous as the previous one, while director Gottlieb would yell out, more, more, you're going in the right direction with this further explaining that he hadn't acted like that since high school. And because of this, according to Bailey, he and some of the other cast didn't think the movie would even be released, let alone be a hit. He saw it as a silly old-fashioned love story, further stating, quote, there's not one dirty word in it, not one naked butt. But Bailey was totally surprised when the movie became the hit that it was. And it kind of goes to show that although he thought that what he was doing was silly, clearly the filmmakers knew what they were doing. But that could also be by design, as the movie was deliberately made to reach certain market targets, thanks to Hollywood market researcher Joseph Farrell as mentioned. Number 4. Mannequin created a hit song All big mainstream movies usually have tie-in songs to help promote the film, and Mannequin really hit big with Nothing's Gonna Stop Us Now, which was an instant success, and has probably gone on to become more famous and recognisable than the movie itself. The song was performed by Starship, as in the group, not an actual Starship. I don't really know much about Starship, other than they also did that song We Built This City, and build it on rock and roll they did. 
Nothing's gonna stop us now is a love duet that just seemed to hit a nerve with everyone at the time and fill everyone with romance as it reached number one on the Billboard Hot 100, as well as reaching number one in the UK charts, with it staying there for a month, where it became the UK's second highest grossing single of 1987, only beaten by Rick Astley's Never Gonna Give You Up. Yep, Starship got Rick Rolled, before getting Rick Rolled was even a thing. The song was even accompanied by a music video, which sort of recreates the movie, only with the band members of Starship, with Grey Slick playing the mannequin and Mickey Thomas playing the Jonathan part, while clips from the movie are also shown in the video, with the movie and song going hand in hand. Yeah, look, it's really cheesy, but it's okay because it's that sort of 80s cheese that everyone seems to love. Number three, sequel. Yeah, well, believe it or not, but there was actually a sequel to Mannequin. Something I didn't even know about till making this episode. Mannequin 2 On The Move was released in 1991, and this time co-written by the original movie's writer and director, Michael Gottlieb, and directed by Tammy and the T-Rex director, Stuart Raphael. This time, the focus is on a different mannequin, and thus a different romance. Now the mannequin, aka Jesse, was played by the original Buffy, Christy Swanson and the male lead was played by William Ragsdale, aka Charlie Brewster from Fright Night. Sadly, lightning didn't strike twice for Mannequin 2, as the movie was a massive flop, only earning $3 million on a $13 million budget, and it got ripped apart by critics, with it going on to be labelled as one of the worst movie follow-ups ever made. Look, I can't really pass comment, I haven't seen the movie, and no doubt it has its fans, but it does seem that when it came out, people weren't keen to fall in love again, with Mannequin 2 going into obscurity. Right up there with Grease 2 and Splash 2, as being recast sequels to romance movies which never lived up to their predecessors. Apparently, and I do mean apparently, so take this with a pinch of salt, but in 2010 there were talks of a mannequin remake, with plans to update the formula, where this time the male lead falls in love with a hologram. Oh wow! That sounds terrible! Number 2. What became of the mannequin? So the big question is, what happened to the mannequin props that were used in the movie? Where did they go? Are they still lingering around a studio somewhere? Or were they purchased by a movie prop collector? After all, the mannequins are probably some of the most memorable movie props in 1980s cinema. Well, one of the mannequins was finally tracked down and put on display in an event which actually made it onto CBS News, where the mannequin has been restored and now put on display at the South Fellini store in Philadelphia. The enthusiastic news reporter asked if the mannequin really does come to life, where one of the employees explains that she does and is friends with the Rocky statue. When Emmy was asked if she had any words, naturally she was silent. Yes, it's silly, but it's all very cute and charming. So it's nice to know that although the characters in Mannequin had a happy ending, so did the actual mannequin prop. Well, one of them at least. Number one, coming to life on the big screen. Mannequin was released in February 1987, and naturally, considering it's just meant to be an innocent, whimsical movie, the angry critics hated it. The Washington Post described it as being a movie made by, for, and about dummies. Leonard Moulton shared his displeasure of the movie by saying Mannequin is an absolute rock-bottom fare, dispiriting for anyone who remembers what movie comedy should be. Roger Ebert added fuel to the roast by saying lots of bad movies are fairly throbbing with life. Mannequin is dead. It also got complaints for simply being a stupid movie with a silly concept. However, it seems that audiences and critics weren't seeing eye to eye on this one, as the general public loved the movie, probably to the annoyance of the critics, as it became a box office hit, making over $42 million on a $7.9 million budget. Box office takings that no one saw coming. It even beat the Sylvester Stallone action movie over the top. And it still has its loyal fan base today, with audiences who love and adore this movie. Yes, it is silly, but then again, so are a lot of movies from the 80s. I think that's one of the reasons why we love movies of that era. They were more fun and carefree. Now, me personally, I'm not a huge fan of Mannequin, but I'm talking about it because over the years, lots of people have asked me to. But I can remember watching it on TV as a kid. If I remember correctly, it would be broadcast every now and then on Sunday afternoons during the 90s. 
And I enjoyed it, and I got sucked into the lovey-dovey, warm, gooey romance of it all. And I had a major crush on Kim Cattrall. It was one of those things that I would watch if it was on TV, but if someone else walked in the room, I would quickly say, What's this? This isn't Power Rangers! But deep down inside, I was enjoying it. It's just a fun, guilty pleasure romance movie that's easy to fall in love with. Yes, it goes without saying that it's not realistic, but I see it as being like a Hallmark card version of a love story. It's just simply designed to make you go, Nah, without really questioning it too much. It's basically a fairy tale of the 80s, an era of department stores. So if you want a little romance in your life, then check out Mannequin. And considering how dark and gloomy the world can be at times, we could all probably do with a little more romance. I mean, if you're in the mood for watching an explosive, kick-ass, action-packed movie, then this probably isn't the movie for you. But if one afternoon you feel like watching a cheesy 1980s cotton candy love story, then check out Mannequin. It's silly, but it's a feel-good, innocent kind of silly. Anyway, I'm Minty, and I can't think of a closing line, so I'll just say Bob. See ya!